Uh, my topic is uh, on one particular philosopher's uh, view of philosophy of religion, and this philosopher is known as John Cottingham, uh, a very famous uh, British philosopher. Uh, I think he now has retired. Uh, I have for uh, several times discussed with him uh, uh, his view on religion, but the interesting thing about this philosopher is that he has a project of uh, of uh, so-called uh, integrating psychoanalysis with philosophy. Uh, so in one break, uh, now this is uh, an, an old project of uh, the British philosopher to to follow the, the, the British school of psychoanalysis and do some philosophy of mind. Uh, but then the next thing uh, uh, interesting is that this philosopher want to defend religion by appearing to psychoanalytic theory. Now, so, uh, now, so basically his, uh, his project start with some uh, understanding of voice critique of uh, civilization or religion. Uh, now, uh, now this uh, on this page, I think uh, there are a few ideas that you you must be very familiar with, and I don't need to repeat all of them. But then, uh, for those who are interested, maybe you can refer to uh, Freud's work on uh, say uh, on religion and civilization, such as Totem and Tapu, uh, the future of an illusion. Uh, civilization and its discontent. The last two seem to be uh, seem to be very important uh, in understanding for its uh, so-called view of uh, Christianity. Now, uh, now a few key ideas now uh, very familiar to us uh, uh, since he wrote uh, the totem and te a totem and tapu. Uh, he argues that uh, now uh, our so-called belief in God is somehow has its origin in the so-called infantile helplessness because of our vulnerability to the forces, to the forces of nature. Uh, we somehow uh, wish to be protected by a father. And somehow this uh, combined with an, uh, an old style of thinking known as a belief in the om omnipotence of God. We somehow make it that uh, a God exists and he pays the vote of a father to protect us. Now, uh, this is very uh, uh, familiar notions, but then the, now, uh, now, one thing that uh, Cottingham wants us to, to focus on uh, in looking at Freud's critique is that now, Freud says that uh, religion is, a, is an illusion. And somehow, it's going to give us a conclusion that we need to give up religion, uh, replace it by a certain kind of scientific worldview, the German work, Wittemsmann. Uh, the scientific reasons. But then the Collingham says that now this is not the conclusion that we're going to to, to take. Now somehow he's going to use uh, uh, Jungian psychology and uh course uh, theory of pain and pain and reality to to reply to voice criticism of religion. Uh, now uh, so what's the key here now now uh, now I want to show you that book. Uh, we won't have time to repeat uh, the whole things. This book uh, was published in 2006. Not not a very new one, but then uh, uh, but then this uh, the discussion of, of his arguments are not uh, very very popular nowadays. Now uh, so uh, Cottingham's defense of religion now start by asking for it. now really your conception of religion is really the right conception of religion to take. Now so now. Uh, in reply, he says, now Cottingham says, now we can have a different conception of religion. Do not take religion as a field. Religion is not a field. Religion is somehow like a, a set of uh, symbolic activities. It's a force of uh, transforming oneself in order to be better, in order to integrate with the world. Now, so he, he considered this as a, as a more proper way of understanding uh, religious faith. Uh, a few points here. Now, uh, first of all, he says, uh, now religion is a process of self-transformation. We want ourselves to be better. We want to go beyond human limits. Uh, that's why we have religion. Uh, but then in doing this, now you have to treasure the idea of the primacy of fasces, primacy of fasces which means that practice must run prior to theory. Practice is more important than theory. Now, the problem with religion on that account is that now a lot of philosophers are arguing whether God exists or not, and we have a lot of uh, metaphysics of God. And on his understanding of uh, the philosophy of religion, these things can ne well, we'll never, this kind of debate will never end, and we don't have any conclusion of the debate of God's existence. We don't know anything. Uh, we don't know the, the, the nature of the universe. 
So uh, what what should we do now? The thing is now if you look at Christianity as a paradigm, now look at what people do. Now they say, for example, when they pray, what what are they supposed to be literally believing in in a voice which is going to answer your wish, your prayer? No. Uh, or is it just a kind of symbolic action, saying that you know, try to be hopeful when you pray, well, there could be an answer. But it doesn't mean that there must be an answer. Now, uh, so uh, somehow he said, no, do not take the words of the Bible literally. Take them as, uh, as metaphors. Now, uh, this view is popular nowadays. I think. Now, so the final point that he wants to make is, now, uh, if I see this as the true nature of Christianity or any kind of religion. Now I will say, now, uh, it is truly uh, in conformity with the founding of psychoanalysis because the quest for spirituality, according to psychoanalysis, is, is a part of our human nature. Now, so where is the quest for spirituality? Now, of course, uh, I, have, I make a small quotation over here. Uh, uh, he has used that work uh, to mean a kind of experience okay, which is beyond the scope of scientific reason. Uh, he used, uh, now I quote from him, the naval spiritual seems to be used to refer to activity which aims to fill the creative and mediative space left over when science and technologies have satisfied our material needs. Now, the common usage of spirituality is just this now. Go beyond the material world, try to feel something beyond this kind of physical stuff. Science, scientific reason can answer you. Now, if you want to have material uh, uh, benefit, if you want to satisfy your biological desire, but spirituality is beyond that. And so somehow you have to use your heart, to use your emotion to feel that part of knowledge of the universe. Now, so now it's this final point that I want to use to to focus on. Now, uh, so how can psychoanalysis help? Now, I quote, I quote two, two short paragraphs from him. Uh, I, I think, well, the idea is he is uh, controversial, but somehow we just take it for granted that, uh, that he is uh, following the, the, the main track of psychoanalysis. He said that psychoanalysis can help us to, to have a spiritual quest for the meaning of life. Now, uh, and Freud is wrong because Freud is uh, too much uh, obsessed by the idea that uh, illusion need be, need be eliminated uh, because of scientific reason. But then you say, the Freudian kind of illusion still has the power to unsettle many believers since, that, since at the very least it raised the possibility that the loving father of Christian faith in the end, that is in the end not much more than a fantasy. fantasy. Now, uh, if you believe in that, well, you can follow the Jungian ideas, saying that now this might be a kind of archetype. This is just a kind of imagination. Now, imagination may be, may be unreal, but imagination is not necessarily unreal. This is the key. Now, uh, but now he say now, far from being an indicator of new forces of immaturity, the capacity for fantasizing, he says, now, for fantasizing, it turns out on the analysis of the post Freudians like uh, Donald Winnicott uh, to be a fundamental part of human creativity. Now, he is here referring to uh, the idea of uh, the idea that Winnicott presents in pain and reality. Uh, those things like uh, the transcendent uh, objects, that kind of things. Now, uh, this is one, one example how psychoanalysis can help us to be more creative and to have a spiritual quest for meaning. Now, the next thing now is now becoming more Jungian. It's in a similar vein, the work of, uh, of uh, Jung stressed the importance of symbolic facts, symbolic thoughts for the health of the psyche. Now, if symbolic thinking is important, then maybe the God architect is something important for us. Because that helps us to be having a more balanced psyche. Now, the non quotation over here, oh, I, I, well, uh, we don't need to go through all this. But then he said the struggle for individual individuation, as Jung terms it, no, uh, the process of achieving internal balance and integration requires those modes of thought and expression which the religious archetypes provide. Thus, the figure of Christ, for example, can be seen as representing the archetype of the self, the completeness expression of the faithful uh, combination we call individuality. Now, 
Uh, I want to make one point out of this analysis. I don't know uh, now uh, if you want to preview with it whether well Jung really means this or, or that. Well, I, well, it's all right. But but the point that Cottingham wants to raise is well, uh, uh, for Jung, well, religious ideas could be fantasy, but fantasy might not be a bad thing because there might be beneficial functions of fantasy. It helps us, us to be more creative. To have a more balanced psyche, and why should you give up all this fantasy in the name of science? And so he think Freud is wrong. Now, uh, now, so far this is uh, Cottingham's argument. But uh, what's the purpose of my of my paper? Now, uh, the main thing that I want to do in my paper is to give a Freudian reply to Cottingham. Not saying that religion should be replaced by science. I'm saying that Freud might actually agree with uh, Cottingham on several points. Uh, now, my, my understanding of Freud is, that, okay, uh, you, you're saying this, illusions are not necessarily harmful. Some fantasies are good for the balance of the psyche. And so you appeal to Jung and Minical. But uh, on my reading of Freud, Freud, well, Freud actually hosts a similar view, saying that some illusions are actually beneficial. Uh, 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 one example that I can quote is from from, uh, uh, from Nature in the new introductory Nature, where Freud discussed uh, three main cultural powers, uh, which uh, is fat, which are fattening the, the status uh, of our scientific thinking. Now he quote three things which he said he he took to be illusion. Now the first thing, art, art is an illusion. No, no doubt, there's no doubt about it. Second thing, philosophy. The first thing that he did. but he said, okay, uh, philosophy is out of the question because not many people understand philosophy, so there's no problem with philosophy. Uh, the same thing, art. Art is only individual expression of the artist's uh, so-called frustrated desires, uh, but uh, it does not invade our sense of reality. So. I can in this say that art is a good thing, a good institution for people to take. Only that Freud would say that religion is a very bad thing. Now for one reason. Now Freud is saying that religion provides us with a false world will, a world will, which is like a theory. A theory saying that uh, you know, say, saying uh, how the universe came about. Uh, and he says that uh, this is going to have a very strong political power on the Society, which can control people's thought and behavior. Now, so a, a point that I want to say is that Freud would see religion as an elusive, elusive worldview or retention, uh, and as a form of social control. And this is the point that uh, Collingham does not take very seriously. Uh, so Freud is attacking just some religion, some versions of religions with worldviews. And now uh, Cottingham is saying that the right kind of religion for us to take is one without world view, without any theory. So I think the two is just saying, are just saying the same thing. Uh, Freud would encourage us to believe in God if God, well, your God is not theoretical. If your God is just a kind of symbolic expression of your desires. If uh, religion is uh, as simple as art, then Freud would say illusion is not a big problem. Now, uh, so uh, let me see. Uh, I have uh, five more minutes now. Now this kind of response. Uh, uh, now uh, this is my suggestion. Now I take Freud to mean that uh, illusions can be harmful or harmless or beneficial, depending on what model of illusions that you're going to take. Uh, and the kind of the model of illusion that uh, Cottingham is taking is the so-called self-expression model. Self-expression model. No. What, what you have in having this illusion is just a kind of imaginative self-expression, which is to balance your thinking, to, to express yourself to communicate with other people, and this is the way uh, that art, artistic uh, people do when they communicate. Uh, and there is also this, this model of illusion known as the worldview model. And uh, an essential component of this illusion is what we call illu uh, uh, rationalization. We need to rationalize our our fantasy in order to make up a theory to convince others that uh, we are holding the truth, to gain political power, to ask other people to 
to believe in our religion. So, uh, so I think for is the, uh, the the model of religion uh, or religious illusion uh, from Cottingham is a self-expression model. Now, if you take seriously this idea, then it means well, any forms of illusion, any forms of fantasy, which is uh, more like a personal expression of uh, unconscious desires or wishes. Now, these kinds of things might not be totally harmful. Right. Five okay. Minutes. Okay. Now, uh, now I have a remaining thing to do. Now, now this is so. This so far will say uh, give us the idea that Freud will not attack all forms of beliefs. Now, uh, one possible example is that Buddhism may not be attacked by Freud. Uh, actually, Jung, well, well, you know, Jung very well. And he is very interested in Eastern religion. Uh, Freud is talking about. The version of Christianity at his time, his time, not our version of Christianity. We have other versions as well. Now, so uh, the next thing I want to ask is now whether we can also use the similar argument to talk about morality, morality, uh, which means, for example, whether we should maximize people's happiness, uh, whether we should respect human rights. And my idea is that if we follow this idea now, morality can be viewed either as a self-contained system of proposition. Say, if you have a theory of human rights, you take it as a theory and you say that this is universally true and everybody should submit to it. Or you take it as an expression of our loving attitudes toward the world. Now, if you have such a, such a conception of uh, morality, it's more like religion. Now, we need to be good to other people, but we don't have any fear, we just practice it. So, uh, so how far can we go? Um, I, I think possibly the Cottingham view is suggested that the, the expressive, the self-expression model can help us to have a more, more defensible form of morality in the future. Now, uh, okay, uh, no. Now here, uh, uh, some final questions. Uh, I take the dominant uh, ethical orientation in Western society to be, to be this free. Kantian ethics, utilitarianism, virtual ethics. And I suppose that most of them are, are theories. Uh, if we follow these arguments, can we follow this? Well, we, 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 can we try to be Kantian, respect other people's rights? Uh, or should we try to maximize people's uh, happiness? Or should we try to be virtuous? And I take this, well, all of these uh, so-called um, ethical orientation can be given different interpretations. They, they can be either either uh, uh, a theory or else a kind of self-expansion. And so they can be based on some fantasies as well. well try to think about a utilitarian who, who wish to maximize the happiness of the world. Is it the kind of imagination that you have? Or is it the truth of the world that we have to maximize people's happiness? Well, is it more, is it more like uh, motivated by some kind of irrational wishes to, to be integrating with the world. And I think, uh, well, you can think about this, whether this, uh, this theory is actually in the future can be de-theorized. De-theorized. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so I think uh, it's time.